hadn't started, you're already laughing. I'm that good. <laughs> so I was kicked out of my flat today. My landlord found out I'd been running a business out of my home, selling body parts on the black market. I called it, home is where the heart is. <laughs> also lungs and kidneys and livers. <laughs> and rectums. <laughs> <laughs> so my parents abandoned me when I was very young. They just dropped me off with a bunch of other kids and drove away. About three days later, I managed to chew through the kennel bars and follow their scent home. <laughs> I asked them, why did you abandon me? I said, well, you're a disappointment. You didn't graduate high school, you haven't been to university, you have no prospects, you're an embarrassment. I was 12. <laughs> it sounds strange, but in an Indian family, you're supposed to have your education sorted out by that age. <laughs> So my name is Charlene, it autocorrects to shaken. <laughs> my surname's Chandra, it autocorrects to Chanda. <laughs> so if you so if you forget my name, just picture a toilet bowl full of stirred up vomit. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Yes, I am single, you guessed correctly. <laughs> I'm not laughing. <laughs> I did have a boyfriend. Um, we'd been together a while, but things got pretty stale. So he said, one day, you know, let's spice things up in the bedroom. I said, ooh, what did you have in mind? He said, let's do something really kinky. Let's do something that nobody else is into, something to make people cringe. I said, ooh, jury duty. <laughs> so I put on a white curly wig and brought out my gavel and pounded away. I said, all rise, and he did. <laughs> I said, you've been a bad boy. I'm sentencing you to five years of listening to Nickelback. He said, objection. I said, overall, bitch. He said, okay, let's forget that. Let's do something a little more conventional that most couples do. Tomorrow night, let's have my parents for dinner. I said, okay, I can manage that. He arrived home the next day and said, where's my parents? I said, your mum's in the stew and your dad's roasting in the oven. <laughs> He said, where's my brother? I said, oh, sweet little boy. He's dessert. He said, what is wrong with you? I said, what? Did you want stir fry? <laughs> he hung his head in exasperation and packed his bags and left. I never saw him since. I was sad, but I had meals for a week. <laughs> You have to focus on the positives. <laughs> but I'm sad, so I went to a bar to drown my sorrows. I said to the barman, give me a cocktail and hold the tail. <laughs> and don't get it on my face. <laughs> made me a cocktail, and then proceeded to splash it all over my chest. <laughs> the other bartender came along, made a cocktail, and poured it down my back. Then they high-fived each other. And then I high-fived them. <laughs> but I did eventually go on a date. He was nice. Um, not much to say, he was nice. Um, we got along, we had a few drinks. He's an investment banker. So I said to him, Mr. Investment Banker, is the old saying true? Is the size of a man's surtax directly proportional to the length of his GDP? 
He said, come back to my place and you'll find out. He said, I'll do a gap analysis, and then we can... <laughs> Some accountants in the room. <laughs> he said, I'll do a gap analysis, and then we can strip our surplus and conglomerate our assets. <laughs> I'll even throw in a gagging clause if that's what you're into. <laughs> Well, that's just dandy, but I'd rather we fuck. <laughs> he says you struggle with euphemisms, don't you? I said, what's a euphemism? <laughs> I still don't know. <laughs> we eventually went to his place, and he proceeded to inject his dividends into my venture capital. <laughs> Repeatedly. I said, ooh. You can be my fiduciary any day. And then as we lay there, covered in each other's uh, social enterprise, he said, I'd like to take this relationship further. I said, great. Tomorrow night, let's have dinner with your parents. <laughs> you have a great audience, and I'm a pilot of vomit, apparently. <laughs>